Well, um, looks like we got everybody here, and it is uh, being 7.30. I'm gonna open the meeting, and um, do we want, do we, do we need to uh, recite the governor's order again? Okay, yes, we... I believe we do. I actually have it posted right on our meeting materials website. Um, just pull it up. Okay. Uh, would you like me to read it? Sure, why not? Okay. Um, oh, excuse me one second. Oh, here we are. Okay. Uh, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, um, general laws chapter 30A, section 18, and the governor's March 15th, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place, this meeting of the North Riding Community Planning Commission is being conducted via remote participation. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately address the proceedings as provided for in the order. A reminder that the persons who would like to listen to this meeting while in progress may do so by visiting HTTPS slash slash colon slash slash us o2 web dot zoom dot us slash j slash nine eight five four three zero zero nine two six or by calling in one three oh one seven one five eight five nine two meeting code nine eight five four three zero zero nine two six we should record that and just play it <laughs> <laughs> okay and having said that chris thank you this meeting is being recorded <laughs> for all to know <laughs> which I forgot to say that in the beginning, but I got it now. <laughs> so, um, okay, so I um, want to welcome uh, Mr. Simasco, Mr. Davis, and of course, Vincenzo, it was always good to see you, sir, come to our meetings. You've been very good about that. We appreciate it. Um, okay, so we uh, we have 239 North Street on as a 7.30, I believe. So, um, Having read through all the notes, there are a couple of questions. Um, uh, you know, one of them would be uh, to you initially, Danielle, after the discussion back and forth with the fire department and the points that were brought up by the opponent that they don't need to make that archway high enough for the ladder truck, uh, as long as all the other vehicles, emergency vehicles can get through and within 150 feet, et cetera. Uh, are we okay? Do we have the okay from the fire department that they're accepting that or are we still? I don't have any further correspondence from the fire department yet on that. Was yeah. their response to that provided to the fire department? Or did they, or I'm sorry, uh, did they just provide it to the fire department? I believe the applicant, oh, go ahead. Well, it's just, Mr. Chairman, I think the well, I'm looking at the last communication from uh, I think it's the uh, yeah Deputy Chief Galvin is uh, from the fourth on Monday, and it says the height of the archway is unacceptable. Uh, I understand that. that. That's why I was, but there is a response to that. Right. We. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, we we got that response yesterday, and after speaking with Thad, the architect. Um, we can raise we can it, raise it, right? So, right. We'll, so we'll we'll raise it to the 13 feet six inches that the deputy is looking for. That's the only thing that he's looking for. So we'll we'll gladly do it. Do it. And it, it's possible it's possible architecturally. So we we're going to go ahead and raise it to 13 feet six inches. That's okay. at the shoulders, correct? I believe it's the whole span. The minimum, the whole span will be okay. 13 six. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I wanted to make sure that we didn't uh, that we didn't overlook that and uh, sure. read everything. So. So that's great. Thank you, Ms. Davis. That, that helps a lot. Yeah. No, absolutely. Uh, helps us move along. Um, okay. And it appears that the uh, majority of the other issues have been addressed. I think the only other one that I haven't seen and addressed is uh, is uh, Dan Mills' or, uh, comment about sidewalk. Well, I think that's a good comment, Mr. Pierce. Me too. A little offsite. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Well, I should mention, actually, um, the applicant did provide a response to that, which um, has not been shared with you yet. I think it came in today. I apologize. I can read it out loud if you'd like. Sure. Well, we're gonna, if, it, if, it, if it becomes the uh, sticking point, we'd have to include it as part of our approval anyway. Oh, 
Okay, uh, would you like me to read the response? Please do. Okay. In regards to the, oh, and this is from, um, uh, from Mr. Pajasek. I'm sorry, am I saying your name correctly? Pajasek, yeah, that's good. Pajasek, I'm sorry. Close enough, um, he doesn't mind. <laughs> <laughs> In regards to the sidewalk, I believe extending the sidewalk from the town hall property to the proposed driveway wouldn't be an issue. Extending the sidewalk to the west past the proposed driveway starts to have impacts on the wetlands area. You don't really see the necessity of having a sidewalk to nowhere on that side of the driveway. Any future sidewalks would need to be constructed on the state property that is located on the corner of North Street and Route 62. With there being no sidewalks on Route 62 in this area, we just don't really see the need here. I am not sure if extending the sidewalk from Town Hall to the proposed driveway is a compromise that Mr. Mills would accept or not. Unfortunately, we wouldn't be able to submit revised plans before tonight and would ask that this be added as a condition as well. Okay. Um, the, um, I think the comment, the reason Dan Mills made that comment, of course, was uh, looking at all of the people over on um, that could potentially come down from the two developments over there uh, from Martin's uh, Brook there, Martin's Landing and so forth, could could walk down there because there is walk, it is walkable to right across the street from that uh, that little piece of land right there. I wasn't sure who owns that corner there. Is that is that state property, the corner? That's the state, yeah. Correct. So even if you even if you uh, went from the edge of the state property uh, to town hall, you would still be um, you'd still be short a little right. bit. Well, yeah, we we'd be well short of getting to that corner. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. extending it from the town hall to our driveway wouldn't be much of a of a, a big deal, and the applicant's willing to do that. Okay. Um, but heading yeah, heading westward, it's 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 you're starting to get into impacting the wetlands, and then like you like you said, there's no actual sidewalk coming from 62 at all. Oh. But, but the whole of, uh... so one on the other side of the street. No, there's no there's nothing on 62 or or North Street. Well, on, on the other side of the street, there was actually a driveway area, an area where buses pick up kids and things like that. There's a paved area over there. The bus and, stop, and there yeah. Is, and there is, um, someone could uh, potentially walk from the Martins Landing all the way across through there and and then cross the street right there. But there's no crosswalk or anything, so no. it almost leads us to um, um, petitioning the state or something for something there. Um to put aside a crosswalk because there are a lot of people over there, a lot of people. Yeah. And, and it, even more now. And yeah, and making it walkable from there to uh, 28 where they could then access the stores and everything over there would be, I think that was Dan's uh, intention. So uh, I guess I'm gonna, I'll, I'll listen to any other comments, anybody else, but I'm gonna suggest that we accept your offer to do as much sidewalk as you can and that we perhaps take it upon ourselves to, to try to do a little uh, chasing of the state to see if we can get a crosswalk there. Mr. Pierce? About that, Mr. Hayden. So yeah, getting a, a crosswalk across 62 Lowell Road at the corner would be great. You do have that driveway that comes right down. That's an emergency access way into right. the original uh, apartments right. there, which yeah. connects into Martin's uh, Landing. Right. Um, and the, the, the students do walk down there for their bus pickup, I believe. Yep. So they can get around that safety barrier that's put in there. So cars can't drive in, but people can get around. Um, that piece of property that's state owned is relatively flat and clear right at the end of North street, as far as I can recall. Um, and of course that's somebody else's property. We can't, we can't ask this applicant right now to, to go across that, but if we can get from property line to the town hall driveway, I think is where there's a, there is a sidewalk. Is there a sidewalk across the front of town hall? No, there no, isn't. The the it ends in the driveway. Once you get at the other side, there is a si sidewalk. Though. Right. Right, right. So they go through the drive. They can walk around the driveway. Yeah, they walk, exactly. They walk around the. They loop around the right. driveway. Then it meets up with a, a nice sidewalk uh, farther yep. east. Yep. Right. So, 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 so if we can go from driveway, driveway to the state property, that'd be wonderful. I don't know what you were talking about for how close the wetlands are there, and I understand that implication also. Um, but we get many more 
feet for the dollar having the private um, folks do it. And it would be a lovely, actually offsite, but on site for this. And, and the owners of this project um, do take a lot out from the people that abut across the street, which would benefit the most from this, um, you know, noise and, and truck traffic and, and the like. Um, so it would be, it would be a lovely, uh, offsite to see happen. Okay. Any other comments? So we're going to, like, we'll, uh, as part of any decision we make, we will, uh, accept your, your offer to do as the best you can with the sidewalk. We appreciate it. Okay. Okay. Um, do we have any other unresolved issues there? I'm trying to remember. I read so many things here. Just check the memo. Um, notes. Obviously, if uh, any approval would then be conditional, the signing of a plan would be conditional upon receiving any changes, any of these changes on a plan. Right. Yep. I think I think one of the issues. I don't know if you one of the issues you questions last time was about lighting and, and we did submit the architect did submit lighting plans and yep, specs like that, that so those were included yep yes thank you we do we normally have those light we normally we just look at the lighting plans ourselves um i don't think we have dci or anybody review those we don't normally or Todd engineer maybe, but I think we're probably okay with those. I think you understood the concept there, which is important. Yeah, no, those, I, I looked at them, they look good. Okay, good, yeah, thank you, Chris. They look good, I mean, the the uh, the down facing uh, lights, the, hood, yeah. the hoods, they're about 4,000 K, which are gonna make them a bit bright, but yeah. they're also, you know, they're also a lower level energy. Um, right. So it, it offsets. Right. Uh, it's going to be a bright white light, but it's going to be down and it's, you know, in a good place. The other lights, uh, the overhead lights um, that are going to probably be in the tunnel or the bridge area, whatever you want to call mm -hmm. it. Those are a, a nice 3000 Calvin, which bring them a little bit more into the pleasing 2800 to 3000 is, is, is a, a, a more pleasing light. It mimics more incandescent light. Am I correct, Dave? <laughs> you're, correct. You're, you're good on lighting too. Um, so. Okay. Anything else, Danielle? Are you uh, looking? Um, so just the uh, DCI had looked at the uh, site distance information that the applicant submitted and um, that was acceptable to DCI and to um, Officer King. Um, and I think the applicant and I had discussed um, making, putting it in a, as a condition of approval um, to submit the retaining wall full plans um, for uh, building a permit, um, you know, prior to issuance of the building permit since they'll, they'll right. have to submit those for building permits anyway. I don't think those right. plans are going to be ready for tonight. Yeah, um, I, the structural I would, engineer stamp, yeah. Yeah, that would seem um, acceptable to me. Wall. And then yep. in terms of the, Turning radius for the fire, for the ladder truck. I believe we heard back from Deputy Galvin that that was fine. I didn't hear any further issues about that. I think Deputy Galvin's only remaining issue had been about the archway, which was uh, going to be raised. Um, right. And I think that was all for the remaining issues. And there is a conditional approval, a draft um, in the file. Um, one thing I just wanted to point out about this one, because we don't normally do them for uh, projects that aren't subdivisions, at least not recently, um, we have been advised by the firm working with us on our stormwater permit that we really should be having inspections done um, right. during construction to make sure the stormwater management is um, appropriate and um, erosion controls are, are well under control. So that was really the only other um, unusual thing about <laughs> this. Is that done by, by the town consultant and paid for by the owner, or is it done by the owner and submitted? It, I believe it would be our consulting engineer. 
Okay, okay, so I, I was gonna say, I believe in the past, we've actually shared it between the town engineer and the consulting engineer. We used to, I, I currently though, the town engineer is just, is just Mike's so busy. Yeah. yeah, I don't think he would be able to do it. Yeah, okay. Okay, so this is a public hearing. So if there's no more comments or questions from the board, I'm gonna open it to the public. Mi Mr. Pierce? Mr. Hayden. So I'm, I'm looking at the GIS map of the property we're talking about. They have a frontage of 175 feet. Um, and I overlaid the wetland, the DEP wetlands map on this. And it looks like they're nowhere close to that to go across the frontage of their property to the state property. And then to come across to the second, not the driveway that goes to the rear of the town hall, but the driveway, which is the circular or the not really circular, it's oblong. Um, that would be the best way. And I, obviously we got to get permission from the town for them to work on the property. I'll bet we can get that in a heartbeat. Um, we can ask uh, a selectman or two that are visiting with us now and uh, to support us and go to the D, uh, DPW and get permission to work on the property with uh, pretty easily, I would, I would expect. Um, so it, it's, it, it's a little longer than, uh, than you would think. It's probably about, I'm gonna, I'm just guesstimating here, it's probably about 600 feet, maybe, in total. That includes the uh, proponent's property frontage, but I think it would be well worth the, that as an offsite. That would be a great offsite for this and that it would help this area out a bunch. <clears throat> okay. Any other comments from the board? And again, I'm gonna open it up to the public. Please direct all your questions through the chair and uh, let us know. Uh, yes, Danielle. One more thing, um, just in following up on DCI's final review of everything, um, I, I think they still needed to take a look at the, um, the plan revision showing the, um, uh, the delineation of the area of disturbance to be sure it was under the acre threshold. Um, they just hadn't been able to get to it over the holidays, but um, I just thought we should put that in as just a condition of approval, um, that it was subject to you know review and approval, final approval by DCI. Um, just to be sure it was under the, it didn't meet the threshold for the storm. Water. It didn't trip the, uh, that it didn't trip the stormwater act. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I thought that was, I thought that had been resolved, but um, apparently not. You yet. know, I realized I didn't see the final, um, a final correspondence from, from DCI about that. I don't know. If we did, there. we did add it to the plans and it, it is under an acre. It's just, they haven't looked at it. Yeah, okay. so that's all. We, we have, we've gone through and we've shown what they, the delineation and it's less than an acre, but they haven't got a chance to look at it yet. Okay, okay. good. I thought that had been resolved, but as long yeah. as it has, and we'll just, again, keep it as a condition. That's fine. Okay, before I try this again, are we all set? <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> so any uh, comments from the public or questions from the public? Uh, if you're trying to, if you if you are trying to make a comment or a question, make sure you unmute yourself before you. Do. Okay, um, hearing none. I guess I can close this uh, public hearing. And um, I know we have a conditional approval available there. Uh, and of course, we will have to make sure that we include everything we spoke of tonight: the raising of the arch, the, uh, the sidewalk and uh, and so forth. Um, if there are no more questions or comments, uh, Ryan, do you have motions there? Yes, Mr. Chairman. I move the Community Planning Commission vote to approve the plan entitled the Proposed Office Warehouse Building 239 North Street, North Reading, Massachusetts, dated 4-27-20, revised 11-5-20, and 12-22-20, drawn by David F. Perkins Incorporated, Subject to the terms and conditions of the certificate conditional approval dated 1521 as amended this evening. Okay, do I have a motion or do I have a second? Mr. Chairman, I second. I have a second from Mr. Rudlaw. 
Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Let the record show four in favor, no opposed. Uh, thank you, gentlemen, very much, and for your willingness to uh, work with us on this, especially in the thing like the sidewalk. That is, that, that is, uh, Mr. Mills is is one of our main proponents for sidewalks. He does a great job recognizing the opportunities, and he's he's done it again for us. So, uh, we, but we thank you very much for cooperating. Sure, absolutely. Okay, thank you all. For thank you very much. Up. Appreciate thank it. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Okay. Nice job there, Mr. Hayden, on the sidewalk. Oh, you're <laughs> welcome, Dave. I, I, think I, I think that's a good move. It is. We I need, mean, we need more Dan, sidewalk. That's not safe around that area, really, if you want to try to come over from the apartments. You know? It isn't. And it, 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 you know, they, uh, they haven't giving back to the town in a lot of ways that way or into the local neighborhood and this is a great way to do a, it i think that's going to be a good uh that, that is going to be a nice addition to that area yeah and, and again, I'm, danielle just if you want to make a note about what we might have to do to get crosswalk there okay uh, how much of it the town has control over and how much of it the state because i know 62 is a county road so um i believe we have some input into what goes on there Okay. Um, as a county road. So uh, we'll take a look at it. And if we can get a little support from our, from our select persons and in, in the process of doing that, we, perhaps we can uh, get, make something happen there. And, and I think yeah. that opens the door for a huge number of people over there that would like to know that they could safely walk that distance. Yeah. You know, so. it's, it's, it's not close, but it, it's a walkable distance to those stores. It sure is. To the restaurants. Um, it sure oh my, it's, you know, I would walk it if I was living there because it's sure. close. Once they get to Main Street, they got crosswalks with lights and all the things they need Absolutely. to get back and forth. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Just got to get them there. So yep. that'll, that'll work out. You know, Dan, so Dan. Have a couple of minutes uh, before our, um, we have a couple of minutes before our next public hearing here. So, um, could we do some minutes, perhaps? Sure. Yeah, I'm looking at them. I read them. Get the 12 one. We have the 12 ones. Yeah. Okay. Um, just, Brian, do you have any, uh, any emotion for the minutes? Is there motions for the minutes in there, Danielle? Um, no, no, there is. Um, would you like me to make a motion? That's pretty easy. Uh, yeah, like to, um, I move this to the, the planning commission vote to approve the minutes dated 12 1 20. Second, okay. I have a motion, uh, by Mr. Carroll, seconded by Mr. Hayden. Is there any, any further discussion? If you're not all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Let the record show four in favor, no opposed. We are minus one member. Okay. The chairman, I move that the Community Planning Commission vote to approve the minutes dated 12, 15, and 20. We don't have those minutes. I didn't see them at least. Yeah, I don't have, I didn't see them in, in no. my minutes. I just finished them today. Okay. I'm sorry, so I saw them on the agenda. I assume they were. Yeah, no, sometimes I hope to get them done before the meeting, but that doesn't always happen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Sorry. I'm assuming, Mr. Carroll, you'll rescind your, um, your motion. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so let's see here. <clears throat> And uh, we, we don't have any ZBA, is that correct? Right. Okay, uh, Mallet Lane, bond release. 
we haven't received all the information we need to do the final release for that, so we'll need to put that on to next. Uh, okay, we'll so we'll hang on to that. Okay, uh, well, we got a few minutes till CPC representative to the facilities master plan. So we no longer have Mr. Bellavance, unfortunately, who had been the right. CPC representative. So I wanted to bring this up. I don't know if you're ready to point someone or if you want to talk about this and then maybe move it to the next meeting, but I wanted to bring up that this would be, um, a, it's, it's a vacancy. I don't know that they've been all that active recently, but at some point they will be. So we'll wanna have CPC representation when, when they are. Well, I know that Abby Herbert is involved in it and uh, I know that she's been, uh, I don't know if she's the chair of it or not, but uh, I know they've been working on it um, somewhat. Um, but again, I, again, like you, Danielle, I don't know how much, how many meetings or how much, how much forward motion they've had on it. They haven't had a lot. Talking yeah. to Abby. Yeah. Um, so, no. Oh, Rich has got his hand up. Yes, Rich. Yeah, they they have a consultant, so they have a consultant in place, and that the consultant's just getting ready to get going. So they haven't they haven't been together in about ten months, but they have the consultant, and they also are going to they're working with the same people that. You're right. working with, That's right? Um, so it's really just getting them going, and I've been doing as much as I can to try to make that happen. But um, uh, but that's, I mean, they're all in place to do what they have to do. They just have to get going. Okay, so um... you know what, Warren? Frankly, honestly, a, a call from you to Abby would would be uh, appropriate in my mind. Okay, because I did speak with her uh, a couple months ago about it about where they were, what they were doing, where they were going. And she indicated that things were going very slowly. So um, um, I didn't really push it. Going. <laughs> Pardon? No, it's important information. I mean, let's put it this way. We were just on a, um, you know, the, the sewage, you know, uh, we were just on an EDC meeting before this. And, you know, uh, Mike Liberto is talking about the sewage potentially coming up at the October um, town meeting. And, you know, we're talking about potentially the winter um, street project potentially coming up at the October town meeting. If the facilities master planning committee doesn't have their information in there, it's going to throw everything back. I mean, we need to know what they're thinking as well. And so we really need to get them going. Yeah, so they're. Um... All right, well, let me uh, let me give Abby a call and see, Danielle, let's put this on to the next meeting. Okay, and I'll, let me talk to Abby a little bit about it and see what she's uh, what she's thinking. And um, and in the meantime, if somebody feels like they would like to be the representative, I see you, Vincenzo. One moment, please. Um, uh, if somebody would like to be uh, the representative from us for that, uh, please let me know. Okay, Mr. Tudo, go ahead. Hi. Sorry, my mouse is not working. That's what I've been trying to play with for a while here. Um, yeah. I have a question. Maybe Rich, you can answer what. What is the correlation between the sewer coming up for a vote and Winter Street and the facility master plan? I'm just, I'm, I'm new to this. I'm trying to um, place everybody, it together. Everybody's looking at that 19, $20 million of Pulte property money that's kind of sitting in the bank. And everybody kind of has their eyes out for their project potentially going after that money to do it. And so like the, you know, if you built a new firehouse and I'm not suggesting they should, but if that's probably gonna come back as one of the things say to $12 million to do that. Um, you know, the, the, the wastewater people are gonna be looking for seed money to get going. They're, they're gonna be looking for money. And the Winter Street project we talked about, potentially we might have to ante up, potentially, ante up some money to get that, um, you know, to sweeten the deal for the developers. So, you know, but the town can't make a good decision unless all the needs are on the table at the same time. So, well, I, I agree. I agree. And, and, uh, Every, I'm just thinking there's going to be a collision and everybody has to look at this, you know, collectively from what's the best benefit for the town and where should we put our money or do we spread it around? I, I don't have the answer to that, but everybody's eyeing that $20 million to make things happen. And, and Mr. Studo, the, the uh, Winter Street project has the opportunity to provide a multi-generational uh, house uh, location for, um, as opposed to putting it over in Ipswich River Park. And as part of the, it could be done as part of the project, which means as opposed to doing, trying to do two projects, they'd be consolidated into the same project. So again, the facilities master plan is important as far as how those two things mesh. 
Yeah. So, uh, there's quite a bit to it. There's actually quite a bit to it. Yeah. No, and I and yeah, I mean, I've been on those. Um, I've been on, I've been on pretty much every single meeting on that wastewater with the sewer. Yeah. So. It didn't seem to me that like they were, yeah, from the funding standpoint, maybe they're mutually exclusive, mm -hmm. but it seems that, um, again, I'm just trying to figure out how it would be. Wouldn't it be that, would it be that the CPC and select board kind of has like a, like a conversation? Like, how does it work on the, um, I agree with Mr. Walner, you, you can't do both. Um, I don't need, I, I don't need a, I don't need a study or a meeting to tell me that. I mean, I can yeah. just look at, I can do math. So, but I do know that, again, I'm trying to come up to speed on Winter Street for this reason, because I can tell you that the, the momentum on SOAR is like a train that I don't think, I don't think any amount of studies is going to stop. Like, that's just my opinion for, my opinion for you, because I think I, you guys have been doing a lot of work on this and I'm new to it, but I feel that you should, guys should know that the SOAR train, it, I mean, it, it's, it's running pretty hot right now. So, well, well, so, so again, to give you a little more input on it, then would be the Winter Street project. One of the things that makes it work is a, is a package treatment plan. However, if we look at the sewer project as being happening coincidentally with it, that takes a whole bunch of money that we would have needed for Winter Street off the table, and we allows us to use that money in other areas for development of that project or for a contribution to the to the sewer. I mean, those two, those two things could, you know, could be nice. They, they actually, they, now, the, two, the two intersect in a number of different places. Now, so getting this facility's master plan is a piece of that puzzle that I, I, I agree with Rich has got to be in there. Okay. So, so um, I'll give you one example. Um, if you take like the town hall will be another one that they'll come up with. Yes, yes. Right? <laughs> well, if you, if you destroy this town hall and then sell that property, how much do you clear of revenue? You know, how much do you make from that? That yeah. can be towards rebuilding the town hall in the with along with the intergenerational community center so there's a lot of chess pieces but without information you just can't you can't right. really do this so yeah that's a that's a really good point rich that uh, town hall is another one of those things that could fit into this uh, winter street project which means all that money could be consolidated into one project which would give us not just a town hall or a multi-generational community center but a project that that would enhance the town greatly so if we could get everybody on the same page, it, it, it looks like that we could make that money go a long, long ways. Also, yeah. let me let me ask to it. And again, if any of these questions seem like really basic, it's just because I'm trying to oh, soak okay. in a, a lot okay. of information at once. <laughs> yeah. um, does the Winter Street project, because depending on how you structure it, would it involve the same level of potential state funding that the SOAR can get? Because I've already started to explore some of that and ask Representative Jones, and it seems that depending on how you can do it, and this is where I think Winter Street, um, uh, for example, like with the sewer, if you guys aren't aware, and I may not even have full facts, that state funding is based on how much employment you can almost guarantee from new employers coming in. Mm -hmm. Is Does Winter Street have any of those components where if you do things a certain way, the state will come in and pick up most of the cost if done right? As far as I know, we were looking at it as a public private partnership, but the private developer taking on the majority of the responsibility to build okay. the Winter Street project. However, however, included in that project is a lot of, um, uh, is re some retail. Some, so again, it's gonna record, it's gonna create employee, employment opportunities, quite a few perhaps employment opportunities, just not just from the building of the project, but from the occupation of it once it's built. So there may be something in there for us there. Okay, thank you. Okay. I'll just add one other thing. The other thing from the EDC we were talking about with the sewage is what's the return on investment? And no one has that number yet, right? So- Well, we again, um, the, the, one of the things you have to remember about the sewer project is that is that the town itself doesn't actually pay the, the town uh, votes the money and the town supports it, but ultimately the users of the sewer are the ones who pay for it because you, from the state revolving fund, the SRF is where the money comes from for, to build this sewer, uh, other than the money that we need to put up front. And the town's responsibility, once the project is done, there's a sewer district that gets created and the town's responsibility from that point on is to only pay for the sewer that they use. And the rest of the users pay into the uh, commission and the commission pays the SRF back. 
So there's, there, there's a big number that's thrown up out front, but the vast majority of that money is covered by the users of the system ultimately. So there's a, so there's a um, there has to be an understanding of that, which to, to let you know that we need seed money for that project, but ultimately uh, is carried by the users of the system. So it requires an act of the legislature to create a commission, and there are commissioners that run it and so forth and so on. It's a it's a pretty much a standard project. So we really need that facilities master planning committee. That's we, as you, the more you talk about this, the more you see how important that plan is. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, it, and they it started so late. Many, yeah, it has so many facets of it. Is that, that annual? Is that done annually? Of, I'm sorry? Is that done annually, the facilities master plan or no? No, no, it's uh, been a long time since they did one. What about that? That one, Rich, that you showed me once and then I found it. Remember that master plan that the town already has? Is that something different? That is something. That was a master plan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was a town master <laughs> planning <laughs> master plan. And it doesn't okay. it doesn't include the schools because the schools yeah. are in good shape. So yeah. Um and they, they know what we're doing here because I've talked to them a little bit, at least the school committee. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let me uh let me uh let me try to touch base with Abby and let's put this on our next meeting as an agenda item. <clears throat> let me see what their what their plans are and <clears throat> if we can uh, identify a meeting and maybe a couple of us go and see what's going on. So I, I'd be happy to help you, Morin, if you want to. Okay, okay, Rich, thank you. I'd be happy to. We'll see if we can move this move this ahead a little. Yep. All right. Yeah, you're uh, gonna... It being 806, I guess we can open our 303 Main Street uh, site plan review. Public hearing, do we wish to uh, have the public hearing notice read or do we have that or dispense uh, with it? Yes. I have it. Oh, do you have it? Okay, if you would please, Chris. Notice is hereby given that the North Reading Community Planning Commission will hold a virtual public hearing on Tuesday. January 5th, 2021 at 8 p.m. on the application of 303 Main Street LLC for a site plan review for the property located at 303 Main Street, plan entitled Dos Lobos Restaurant, 303 Main Street, North Reading, Mass., drawn by Cornerstone Architects, Inc., you may participate in this hearing online, HTTPS, colon backslash backslash us zero two web dot zoom dot us slash backslash j backslash nine eight five four three zero zero nine two six by phone one nine two nine two oh five six zero nine nine meeting meeting id nine eight five four three zero zero nine two six or by one tap mobile one nine two nine two oh five six zero nine 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 eight five four three zero zero nine two six US New York meeting ID nine eight five four three zero zero nine two six. This okay, hearing also you. will be <laughs> broadcast live on NORCAM on the local government access channels 22 and 24 and on streaming channel online at HTTPS colon backslash backslash NORCAM.org backslash VOD.htm. Okay, we got it. Laverick. It's a lot more than usual. Yeah, well, no, that's how it is these days. Um, okay, do we have um, anybody making a presentation on this or, or are we? Uh, yep, we have uh, Jim Dietz here from Dos Lobos, the owner, and Steve Gabardi, Jim Dietz okay. Jr., and then Mike Gabardi also. Mike's going to be doing the presentation for us. Okay, thank you. All right, I could uh, share my screen if you guys would like to see uh, some of the uh, documents that I uh, have already submitted through the uh, online portal for North Reading. Yeah, we can, we uh, we actually have them all on our iPads or whatever, or our computer screens, but we'll, but you, it'll probably be helpful to you put, to put them up as you'd explain them so we'll know which one you're talking about. Sure thing. Sure thing.
All right, just let me know when you can see the site plan. I have a PDF yep, up of the site plan. This was originally done in uh, 2010 when this uh, facility uh, was originally uh, built. Uh, this mm -hmm. uh, original drawing was done by Hayes Engineering out of w uh, Wakefield, and it was mm -hmm. uh, redlined through uh, Cornerstone Architects out of Shelmsford. Um, so the, what we're doing at uh, 303 Main Street Dos Lobos is rebranding a Mexican restaurant into a brew pub. Uh, and in doing such, we will be looking to eliminate uh, some of these parking spots. You can see on the lower level of uh, all the X's, we're eliminating uh, the better part of nine parking spots, uh, some of them being uh, handicapped that'll be moved uh, in the uh, rendition uh, above this. Uh, we'll also be removing some sidewalk uh, and some handicap ramp. Uh, this will be in order to build a 22 by 24 uh, three season uh, patio similar to what was done over at the Horseshoe. Uh, aside of that, there will be a 12 by 22 patio uh, that will link into pre-existing outdoor seating. Uh, the aesthetic of uh, this build out will remain consistent with the uh, aesthetic currently there, a uh, hardy plank siding. Um, and uh, as I mentioned, any of the uh, uh, any of the parking spots that will be lost to this, uh, I believe will be made up uh, within the remainder of the parking spots, which are, I believe, in excess of what was required when I, uh, I believe I saw some correspondence from Danielle. Um, so that's the, um, like I said, my, my, my apologies uh, for first site plan review. Not sure uh, what else you folks would like to discuss. I know this is primarily focused on exterior. Uh, so please ask any questions that you may have on this build out. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, this is Dave Rudloff. Yep. Um, I just have a question. So are you going to submit a new site plan and actually stamp site plan? Y yes, sir. So we took this 2010 site plan from Hayes. I am working with the person who did that, Rich Williams uh, of Williams and Sparagis of uh, Middleton. Uh, he will be completing uh, an updated site plan as well as some other documentation uh, that relates to the current septic in place. Okay, I, I have one question though, just on a drive-by there. If you if you kind of zoom in on your dumpster area, yes, maybe uh, any any one page or view of that. This PDF is very it's very painful. It's a slow slow opening PDF. I mentioned that to. Uh, our planner, oh, it's 24 it megabytes, so it's uh, it's even slow on my computer, and yep. that's all I do all day is open CAD drawings. So I think to the, to the right of uh, the proposed building, uh, FF 102 uh, is where our outdoor dumpster area is. Yeah. So my question is, um, there's a note there again. This is the the previous or the last site plan that had. Um, whatever features proposed, there's there's no island right there now. All you have is call it a Cape Cod asphalt bit berm, you know, that runs there. You do have that low wall, and when we say low, you know, it's below grade almost. You know, that's it's low. There's you don't even know there's a black wall there, and then you have white PVC fencing uh, stockade that goes, you know, up roughly where that wall is, and and then it's just it's just a berm. And then north of that in plan, where you have the serpent move there, you, you have a Jersey barrier there. I'm just wondering why the Jersey barrier is there right now. Uh, Jim may know. Yeah, that Jersey, that, that, Jim, that Jersey barrier was there from when we had the uh, outdoor dining and we, the Jersey barriers were required. And when the uh, company came to pick them up, they forgot that one. <laughs> So, so, lost to, one, huh? so to kind of piggyback on the building inspector's concerns with public safety right in that very location, how, do, how does that get addressed? And let's just talk site right, right now, not architecture. How are, you, how are you protecting people right there? So nothing has changed from the original drawing from 2010 or whatever date that was. That whole side where that existing patio is and the existing uh, berms and the existing uh, garbage dumpster area that's nothing has changed and nothing will change in that area well there's certainly been a change there you didn't you didn't carry out the plan you proposed there's no island there that island is a a five-foot island 
if you zoom in on it and you don't have an island, you have just a piece of bit berm that goes up on the right hand side there where your cursor is. There's no return. You're using every bit of that stall and you need every bit of that for a waste truck to get in and pull that eight or 12 yard dumpster out of there. So I'm just curious, again, uh, the architectural plans when we get to them shows two trees right there in that five foot island that doesn't exist. Um, and right now, again, it's just fencing. You know, if, if I can be blunt, uh, you know, ugly white PVC fencing and no trees and there's no berm or planter there or anything. And I'm just curious, even if you were to do it, how many weeks until waste management takes it out, you know? So, so Dave, it's, that's consistent with what was approved prior to us even coming in here. We made no change to that whatsoever and have are no, making no change well, to that. If you, I, you know, the only thing I'd say is that anybody that's in this public meeting, just go on a, on, a, on an aerial and that island, number one, doesn't exist. It doesn't exist on my photos that I took today, but it exists on your plan. So that's all I'm just saying is I want to get that right out of the way that if you're going back to Hayes or whoever, you know, make sure they do a proper as built of the property, gotcha. um, not just assume that what was proposed and was never done, you know, but when they built the place, it should be taken into account that it should be done or, you know, again, I, I'm not saying it has to be a five foot berm. I'm just bringing up the realities of retail and trash removal. I don't know if you get enough room there. So if you're going to propose something, propose something that's real, that the commission's going to look at and, and know that that's what you're going to build. Because I suspect the Jersey barrier is there just to protect, you know, your, your terrace there from waste management, Casella, whoever, from taking it out, you know. I follow that. Sure, we can we, we can bring that up with uh, Williams and Sporagis. Obviously, they'll be out on site to do uh, this uh, this updated and stamped site plan. We can address this. Uh, I'll note this as a question of concern that it is in this 2010 rendition, uh, but was never built. Uh, the white fence does end somewhere around my cursor uh, yep. and, and blocks off um, uh, any access to the uh, five to six yard dumpster that's currently there. Yep. And I know one of the concerns I believe was a uh, that was brought up, I believe, by uh, Mr. Noel was just uh, he brought up specifically uh, um, uh, pedestrian hazard um, uh, out by the the patio um, in, in one of his concerns uh, in some documentation I was sent by Danielle. And I can switch over to a uh, more detailed architectural rendering, an eight page PDF. Uh, that may give some more uh, detail to this particular uh, section, which is part of the site plan review for what we want to uh, build with this 22 by 24 three season and the 12 by 22 patio. So were there any other questions with the site plan before I bring it down and attempt to reload it later? Well, is, it, is there a uh, intention on your part to uh, put bollards in? there or somewhere along there? I've checked with Rich Williams. There, there was a discussion. I asked Rich what would be code required uh, as far as bollards. He didn't believe there was any specific code requirement for bollards, uh, given the fact that we would have on this, uh, this area here uh, that I'm highlighting with my cursor will be the 22 by 24 uh, build out, which will have a four foot frost wall, uh, provide adequate uh, patron protection. Uh, this 12 by 24 will have a fence section that will tie into the current fence uh, that is around this area. There is no uh, use of bollards out there uh, currently for any patron protection. Uh, there is a curb uh, that sits up approximately six to eight inches uh, above the level and elevation of the uh, parking lot. Mr. Pierce? Yes, Mr. Hayden. Um, if I'm not mistaken, that little outdoor patio, did we ever really review that? Or was that after the fact and the building inspector reviewed it because of size? I'm not sure if that got added on for the COVID thing either. It wasn't. No, the original one was it. They had a, they had a little patio out there for smoking for sure. Um, and then they probably got more had had added more tables out there for COVID. 
So they had to add protection. That's what the protection's for. That's what those Jersey barriers were for, to protect. Right, right. Since 2010, we've had how many people go through buildings and hurt people? A month ago, they up in, up in Andover or North Andover went right into a, into a restaurant. Luckily, nobody was hurt, um, except for the woman that was driving the car. She took out a, a roof support um, at the, you know, the Rockies Plaza there? Yeah. Right there. Um, so, there's so, a, uh, so there's just a berm there then that keeps everybody from driving over that. Yeah, I don't think it's going to keep a car from driving over that. And no, coming in there, no. if they go too fast, you know, yeah, you backing, you get cars backing up too. I don't think in yeah. the site here, it shows right angle parking. I think in the architectural, it probably correctly shows angled parking. because It to, should definitely be angled parking. Yeah, but again, again, if you're, if you are backing up that, You'll, you'll break break for the gas issue. Um, yep. and, and to comment on the there's no code requirement, I mean, that's kind of an empty statement, really. There's, you know, the only, it's you've got utility groups that have a requirement for bollards, and that's uh, as arbitrary as anything. It's uh, an NSTAR national grid person coming out and saying, I want one here, here, and here. It's similar to the way the fire department works. It's There's no real written thing in there that says, you have pedestrians here and you need to protect them in every single case. So, I mean, it, it really does need to be looked at case by case. So what, what Jerry raised is valid. Um, I think he's, you know, his, it's a reasonable thing he's raising. And he even mentions, I think you might be doing that with bollards or I, I suspect you'd be doing it with bollards. So it'd be something we definitely want to look at around there just to protect the public that would be seating out there. Yes, sir. A absolutely. Sutton, Sutton, we can for sure discuss. Like it's in your own best interest. It's in all of us, everybody that's in this meeting. Yep. It's a safe way to do it. Okay. okay. Um, I could switch over to if we're uh, done looking at this uh, general site plan, which we know was going to be updated and stamped per uh, Williams and Sparagis. I can change over to a uh, the, the most recent architectural rendering uh, that I also submitted to the town for any uh, additional questions. Okay. Um, it's all right with me. The, the only other thing I saw that was the fire department wanted uh, better access to the fire control, fire detection controls. Yes. Yeah, I, they're, they're the one, yeah, their uh, connection. Where is the FDC right now? Like, I, I believe it's right here. When I, I did walk through with uh, Deputy Chief, um, and, and he, he did call out the fact that the way we were setting up this new uh, area for a handicap ramp uh, and the fact that we are closing off four foot worth of section for uh, handicap van accessibility uh, is going to give him what he needed to come in, uh, park a fire truck and put hoses at a reasonable angle to connect to the uh, fire apparatus, which is right here against this bump out sidewall. So he did, he did seem relatively happy with the fact that we were adding this uh, uh, handicap ramp uh, and block out in this particular area. Okay. Good for me. Okay, uh, that, I just wanted to make sure we didn't uh, ignore that, that's all. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, here is the architectural rendering, an eight page uh, PDF that I did send over. Um, this is the uh, exterior elevation of what we're looking to add. So this is the main entrance currently to Dos Lobos. It would remain the same. Uh, what we're looking to do on the outside, I'll start on the further side closest to IPF. Uh, we are looking to repurpose uh, two windows uh, with a set of uh, doors that will be the access point to our brewing production area. Uh, and this is where that uh, handicap ramp I mentioned will go. That's for a reason uh, so that we can uh, receive uh, and send out uh, grain and spent grain in and out of the production area. Uh, the fire apparatus is right here. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, this new handicap area that will be somewhere out here in front of these doors uh, will give proper access to the uh, fire um, items. Uh, moving over from that section, uh, we're keeping the rest of the exterior the same, uh, including the front entryway, which is right here where my cursor is. Uh, what we'll be looking to do is take over uh, five or so spots uh, in the parking lot and create a uh, 22 foot by 24 foot 
three season bump out, uh, as I mentioned, very similar to what the horseshoe did. Uh, these retractable windows will basically be overhead style doors, just like the horseshoe. Uh, they will be obviously on this outward facing wall. They'll be on this side facing wall. Uh, and, and on this left side wall, they will be at ground level uh, so that we can access what will be a patio approximately 12 by 22. Uh, and then that will go over to this area we just talked about, which was the uh, exterior uh, seating area that's, that's been uh, pre-existing and, and is there currently. Um, so the, these are the major changes we're looking to do to the exterior uh, of this building. They are primarily on the parking lot side uh, there is one change, and I apologize for not, not noting this on the site plan. We uh, are looking to add to uh, a second pylon sign uh, out on the Main Street side. Uh, so this original site plan called for a sign uh, right here where my cursor is. Uh, and there is a concrete pad poured there appropriately for it. Um, Right, right here, sorry, if you can see my uh, cursor moving out in front of proposed building FF 102, uh, uh, there is a concrete sign uh, pad there, but there is no sign. Where the sign actually ended up uh, was over here where my cursor is on the opposite end of this building in front of the IPF, uh, the fitness location. I think it's notated right. on the bottom portion of this. So we'd be looking to add a second sign here where that was uh, uh, on the on the prior site plan and there's already a concrete uh, pad there to accommodate that sign. Um, so I'll get back. To well, the question would be, did the original plan um, abandon that that one in in uh, in play by uh, and take the other one in place of it? No, um, Mr. Pierce, what happened was that when we took over um, three years, four years ago, here, um, that sign was not seen from the road very well because it was in a in a valley. So, with the with Jim Dimitri, the building owner here, we decided that we were going to redo the entrance, mm -hmm. and we got that all approved and, got, and did that. And we also moved the sign at that point over to the other location. Okay. So, so um, we're adding a sign, or we're going to remove a sign and move it at adding a sign okay i think that may be an issue no then we don't have to add it if it's an issue <laughs> yeah the current sign is actually to the left of the call it left driveway yeah yeah it's right right where my cursor is right now out in front of where the other dumpster area is for the right. uh for the gym so i if did that wanna... sign becomes an issue um we'll just put that in the back burner I can go over the zoning bylaw. I'm pretty sure you're limited to one pylon sign. Um, That's fine. We'll abandon it. But I can check that and get back to you. Yeah. Sure. Well, with that being said, that would be the only uh, street side, main street side uh, exterior change that we were we were looking to make was that signage. The remainder uh, of any changes uh, to the exterior would would be on the parking lot side and be made up of this uh, three season addition. Uh, mm -hmm. along with an outdoor patio that would have a trellis over it uh, leading into the pre-existing uh, outdoor seating area. Okay. Um, well, it, it kind of appears that there's a, uh, we're looking at an old plan and that we're, and that we may be a little premature in our meeting here, not having an up-to-date plan with all these changes that you've, uh, other than the red lines. Um, um, <laughs> So uh, it would probably be good to get a plan with all of these things put on it all at once so we can look at the whole project at once. The, the site, plan, this particular eight page PDF it was uploaded to the town uh, along with a prior that was dated 12-8. So there should be two versions of this uh, that, that currently exist on that I, I forget the name of the, the, the platform that I, I upload to, uh, but both should be out there. The red line should be out there. Uh, as well as a few other documents. Yes, we do have copies of um, of all of those. I I, th I think that um, there are some elements that are not incorporated into even the yet in, that aren't yet incorporated into those plans. But yes, the board members have received um, the red line site plan and the. Yeah, I've got the red line plan. Yeah. 
But and I the don't... architectural drawings are in there. Oh, there's there's a 150 seat drawing in there, Warren, and then there's the. Okay, I didn't look at the 150 seat drawing because. Yeah, that's a new drawing. Okay, that's, that's, that's with their that's with their facility in there, and I did have a couple questions about that, if I may, Mr. Pierce. Yes, please. All right, so we've got. I see where all your your mash tanks and your distilling tanks are, and then we got a large space, large open space. What are we doing with that open space? Is that storage, bottling area? No, that that uh, that's purely uh, production um, area. This this is only there's only from from this wall, the sheared wall with IPF to this yeah. drink rail is only okay. is only twelve feet. Uh, this, right, li this line in the middle is 48 feet of continuous trough drainage. Okay, so what one of the problems is is that we got a big piece that doesn't belong to your to your plan in there. You follow what I'm saying? To the left of the of the that that wall behind the tanks. Behind the tanks is I. Yeah. 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 They, you should they should put something in there to tell us that that's another part of the building. Okay. All right. All right. You, uh, follow, uh, you follow what I'm saying? Yes, sir. It, it, it's confusing for us and it will be confusing for the general public. If they looked at these drawings, more confusing for them. We look at drawings often. What, uh, how many, uh, presently, how many seats are there in the Dos Lobos restaurant area? Do you know? I'll leave that to Jim, uh, Jim Deet senior. I believe he'll know better. Okay. Yep. So, Currently, we have about 175. I think we're coded here for 200. I have to check. Uh, used to say it on the liquor license years ago. It doesn't anymore. But the function room, which consisted of about 150 seats, is no yep. longer. It's down to, you can see, a limited amount of seats here. Right, uh, right, right. No, no, I understand that. And and, and then we lost all the seats. If you if you look at the this, this area here, I don't know if you see my cursor or not, but the two yep. booths, the round booths, we lost yep. all those seats there, too. So Are you we taking have those less round seating. booths out? Are you leaving Round those booths? Round booths sustain, but right okay. along here were all booths that are yep. no longer going to be there. Okay. So we have yes. more now. We have less seating than we did before, than we're actually um, right. food for. So if you had if you had two hundred plus because of that of the function space, you're going to be down by almost a hundred seats. Is that correct? Uh, yes. Okay, because that helps with your parking. Because if you if you fill the restaurant. And you filled the the function area. There wasn't enough parking. I okay. have been there several times when that happened, and that was when they originally opened. Well, um, unfortunately, we've never had enough business to fill the parking lot, so I wouldn't. Yeah, know that. I, I, I'm so, I'm <laughs> sorry for that, but uh, yeah. So that that was back a long time ago. Yep. So, um, this plan. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, this, this, this plan does show us at, at 150 total, uh, including all, uh, all all outdoor, which is the uh, the three season area, patio, uh, restaurant, interior, uh, and then the old function room, which is now a tap room. So entire premises, including outdoor, uh, three season and patio will, will be no more than 150 people. Okay. How many people do you expect to be working in the uh, in the brewery area? The brewing area, uh, the production area during a normal course of business where we're physically brewing beer, uh, no more than uh, no more than three people. OK, it's a, okay. It's, a, it's a relative. It, it could be a one to two man show most of the time with, with a third coming in to help uh, during days that we keg. OK, that's fine. I mean, you know, it, it didn't look like you were going to you were going to go over uh, parking wise because of the reduction in your in your seating. Uh, but I'm not the one making that calculation. Danielle usually does that and calculates what the what the parking and the seating and all that other stuff goes together for us. Yes, um, and I apologize. My memo on this project did not make it into your file, so I've actually just uploaded it a little while ago. Um, yes, I think they are fine on the parking. I'll do a final check, but I. Um, but yes, they they're. Seating capacity is uh, now uh, less than it was. So the total numbers, including the retail space, um, are uh, they, they should be within that. Let me just double check. Mike, can you zoom up? Uh, not zoom up, really. Just go up to the front of the building. I just want to again look at that. Yeah. 
Got it. You might want to just on like your elevation in here, you might want to mark out the fire department connection, the FDC, as you, you can see the box there. Yeah, I'll, I'll, so I'll have him mark that. Yeah, sure. This doesn't call out. So th then when the deputy chief sees it, he knows, again, he can positively identify it both on the elevations. And then a, a question I have on just in general, because it's, is this, uh, I don't know if you, um, is, if the architects on the, are the but are you doing a code analysis on occupancy here? Does it change to, you know, breweries often become F2s factory. And so you have to kind of change the use there. And then you get, you get you, a tap room, you know, could be a B or an A2 use. So everything kind of changes from just being pure, pure say restaurant like before. And have, have they gone over that with you? Uh, no, we have not. Uh, we, we, the, the way we were thinking, this is a rebrand. Th this tap room is just an extension off of uh, a spot that is already a restaurant, uh, will continue to be a restaurant. We will just have on-premises uh, beer production. Um, so the, right. the idea was to keep, keep the same uh, re restaurant, keep the same uh, similar menu, um, and, and, and just, uh, change, uh, change concept from, from Mexican to a, uh, more of a, uh, pub style, um, right. menu. But I, I think your drawings, you know, your drawings will probably want to have a code analysis because I believe the production part. And if you're doing any retail of beer, are you doing any, I should ask the question. Are you retailing? So, uh, it? David, this is uh, Jim Deets Jr. I don't know if this will answer your oh, question. I see that. So we're going for a brew pub license, which is yep. essentially a brewery restaurant with retail. And when we first discussed this with Jerry, he said, because we're not distributing any of that beer, there shouldn't be any new zoning required. I don't know if that answers your question or not. Well, it's, it's a two part. So it's not as much the zoning. And if Jerry's looked at it and doesn't see anything, but it's also just the occupancy, which could drive different requirements. Again, sprinkler requirements, you, you've got, based on having an FDC, you've obviously got your wet system, but you might actually have a different coverage requirement because of the F2 requirement and that little sliver you have over on the left there, that's all pure production. It's factory, uh, should be factory. It shouldn't, so you're going to have multi-use across this, whereas before you enjoyed more of a, a restaurant use occupancy, which is Fine. So what that'll trigger is it could trigger different things about egress, different things about the amount of GPM on a, on a, on a sprinkler head, all those kind of things. It's, it's not necessarily under the purview of this commission, but it's something missing right now in your drawing set. You should probably have a code, a page you know, on the cover page that gives another a little bit of an analysis that you see usually on a new set of drawings, and it'll just list the use occupancy. It maybe it'll all be the same, maybe after... They do that check there won't be any changes to it but i think since the change is enough you and jerry's kind of indicated he'd like to see you know some con confirmation that that that's been looked into because that might trigger different things one hour rated two hour rated walls between the partitions right now they're probably probably already that way now but you get what i'm saying I, i'm not you're not lo looking to solve it tonight <laughs> it's just you should, you need to look at it, I think. Sure. I, I can speak with the current architect and discuss a uh, cold analysis uh, with him and see if we can't get a, uh, uh, a separate page to try to clear up some of these, uh, some of these questions. It just yeah. would be a, it would just be a table and, you know, under if it triggers certain things, there'd be some notes on it. That's all. It's just, they'll know what, they'll know what, you know, that is. <clears throat> sure. Okay, um, any other comments or questions? Okay, if you could um, remove your screen share for now, I'm gonna open it to the public and see if there's any public comment or questions so that I can see everybody. <laughs> I guess it's just us, but uh, um, I am gonna open it to the public and please direct all your questions to the chair. Are there any comments or questions from the public on this project? Okay, I'm not hearing any, so uh, we'll just, we're gonna have to, this obviously is gonna get extended for us to uh, or to uh, give you a chance to update your plans and bring us uh, uh, any of the changes that we've talked about tonight. Any other comments or questions from the board at this point? 
Okay, so we're going to continue this to uh, what do we have a time certain for that, Danielle? Um, January 19th is our next meeting. And uh, let's see, we currently have, oh, maybe Debbie can help me with this. Um, for the times, uh, we have another public hearing beginning at eight. Yes. I think 7.30 would be available. Would we want to do it at 7.30? Do you think um, they can have everything to us so that we can review it? That's, yeah, that's only two weeks. It's a lot of, yeah. could be a lot of work in that. I, yeah. I, I, I feel relatively, I mean, uh, some, some of these changes that this, uh, uh, our architect did was uh, within 24 hours, cre created right. the entire site plan red line, uh, created the entire uh, outdoor area updates within 24 mm -hmm. to 48 hours. I, I feel relatively confident uh, that okay. if I go back to him stating that we need a couple of changes made to the uh, architectural layout and this 150 uh, seat PDF, uh, I think you can accommodate those uh, well in advance of this uh, the two week meeting. Okay, and if you can get Rich Williams to take care of the engineering part of it as well. So, sure. Um, it was supposed to have that by the what the uh, the twelfth, Danielle Tuesday, the Tuesday before the meeting, or do you let it go a little longer? Uh, for continued plans, um, there's no firm date we have. It's it's nice if you can have it for a few days before the meeting, so we, you know you can see it, and so we can, can have it by a Thursday, so that we have a chance over the weekend. Right. Yeah. yeah by yeah, the fourteenth would be nice because then yeah. they can upload them on Friday, and and we can see them over the weekend, so we're right. not crammed. So you're, you're talking, so not only the, the, so the architectural plans, which is the eight page uh, PDF, uh, the one page 150 seat document updated to show uh, mm -hmm. the IPF space. And then you're talking about a, a full stamped uh, walkthrough site plan, updated site plan for the next as well. Well, if we're, gonna, just be architectural? if we're going to be voting on this, we would need an updated site plan. Okay. Okay. I mean, you know, we're not going to vote on an incomplete or a non-existent plan. Sure. I just wanted to make sure that I've got, I, I've made those yeah. three notations. I'll speak with uh, Charlie Cochran, uh, the architect. And I'll speak with uh, Rich Williams tomorrow to make sure we can get these yeah. in. So if it looks like it's going to be a problem getting it done in time, please call the office and let Danielle know and we'll reschedule uh, because it is kind of a tight time frame for these guys to work in. Uh, sure. I know you're in a hurry to get going, but sometimes uh, they can't uh, get things done quite as fast as you might like. So just keep us in the loop so we know. Yes, sir. Okay. So as of now, we are on the agenda for the 19th at 7.30? Yes. Okay. And hopefully you'll have everything together so we review it. We don't have any major changes or questions. Great. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Yep. Thank you. Okay, let me just take a, another quick look at this. Guys, did they did they propose a sign, an actual like logo or anything? Here? Yeah, there's I'm... a sign. It was in the it was in the uh, share file. Okay, yeah. but they're that. not going to do it. They're not going to do it unless they come looking for. They'd have to. Uh, I my my recommendation to them, of course, would be that they do a if they want to do a, a new sign, that they're going to have to submit a signage plan. Yeah. For the whole site again. Yeah, um, I think so. Yes. Well, right. I, I, they, they wanted, you know, there was discussion about the monument, but I'm talking about even the replacement of the the Dos Lobos on the front that right, exists right. now. Okay. Right. Yeah, I see it now. Okay. Yeah, this I mean, one's a like expansion, you know, monument. If they types. change yeah. the size and all that, they can, they, you know, but, uh, but if they're going to make any major changes, the sign plan would be uh, uh, pref prefer preferable to... Uh, so that we have everything on one on one page on one one side. Yeah, I, I I think they moved the sign for a couple of reasons. It was a little bit hidden, and they were able to right. add IPF to it. Right, exactly. And they don't have IPF on this sign, so. Right. Okay, um, so I think the only thing left on our to me, our agenda tonight IPA. would be. Pardon. They have IPA now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> the only uh, <laughs> the only thing left would be our planning administrator update. Do we have anything tonight or are we good? <laughs> We're almost good. I promise to keep it brief. Um, uh, January 14th, the Capitol Committee is gonna, has invited me to their meeting to discuss the Central Street Sidewalk Project. If anyone is interested, I can pass along the information. Um, I'm sure the Dan will be. I'm sorry? I'm sure Dan will be. 
Interesting. That would be terrific. Um, <laughs> and uh, the town engineer said he was also able to attend that. So um, I will be presenting it that night. Um, uh, so I should say afternoon. It's 430 in the afternoon. Um, just wanted to, oh, we, we do have a few additional business loan programs that we've been made aware of. Um, kind of trying to get the word out. Um, there, there are some sector specific loan programs um, that are focused on things like fitness centers, restaurants, bars, places that are really, you know, having a hard time, um, you know, as far as uh, COVID right now. And um, I've heard from a couple of businesses already that they uh, believe they're eligible. This doesn't have the same income eligibility requirements as the earlier loan programs um, that we were that we've been working with, and so we're hopeful that it'll apply to more people. Um, the deadline for that is January fifteenth, so it's pretty tight turnaround. Um, and what's the uh, name of that program, Danielle? So Just, uh, it's, I have a. Want to at least forward it to or tell them about oh, it. Oh, sure, sure. So it's um, I can actually I'm gonna put the I can put the website in the chat. Um, it's the MGCC, um, and it's their sector specific loan program. Um, let me just put in um, the see if that's okay. So it's empoweringsmallbusiness.org. They just posted um some additional loan programs. They had had a previous program. This is a little bit different. This is a little bit more expanded and um, some requirements are not quite the same. So hoping more people will be able to see it. We put it out on town news. Um, I know the chamber is going to be getting the word out about it too. Um, I sent it to a list of some of the businesses who had indicated interest in previous small business programs. Um, so I guess wherever we can try to let people know would be great. Sure. Uh, Thinking okay. about how to get the word out about that. Um, let's see what else we have. Um, Abacus had gotten back in touch with um, some further refinements to the plans they've been working on. Um, I can share that with you. Um, tonight's agenda was a little bit full. Um, you know, they've offered to follow up. You know, with a call. Um, I can pass along the information to you, and if it seems that it makes sense to schedule them again for an upcoming meeting week. That. In the meantime, I did pass along the information that Ryan um, gave us when we were talking, when he was talking about um, discussing with some developers um, what, you know, people might be looking for and hoping to hear. And they felt that that seemed to be pretty consistent with what, um, you know, what their understanding was. They've also been re reaching out to some in the development community about this um, with a slightly different kind of a focus, maybe more of a, um, a more of a, a high level view rather than um, the specifics of the site, but they said that they would gather whatever feedback they were getting from developers um, and, um, and and pull it together for us. Um, so that should be interesting um, to hear. Um, I think we are going um, to be dealing with the, the 5G small cell um, situation pretty soon. Um, I think well, Warren and I had had a brief discussion. We thought maybe March 1st would be a good meeting for us to have a workshop discussion about that. Um, I know we had also mentioned at one point getting like an industry representative to talk to us about 5G and what it's going to look like and really how it's rolling out and how the whole thing works. Um, I, KP recommended I reach out to um, a gentleman who works for the city of Boston who um, has been very involved in their communications and broadband and small cell networks. He was um, kind enough to write back to me and he actually said he would be willing to talk to us at a meeting, So, um, which I thought was very generous. Um, and I will reach out to him and um, see what we can arrange. He's, he's already sent me some materials that he uses to explain this to people. So I'm hopeful that that can work out um, maybe on the same night that we have our discussion. Um, That's great, like to be, yeah, that's right. I'm sorry? The more we know, the better. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so um, let's learn what we can learn. Yes, absolutely. And in the meantime, I do have draft. I have a draft policy that KP prepared for us um, that really would involve us kind of customizing it a little bit to talk about some of our aesthetic preferences. But it actually 
it actually goes pretty far. It's much more detailed than I think some of the sample work that they had given us in the past. Now that this has moved along a little bit and we understand more about what we're allowed to regulate and what we're not allowed to regulate, they have really been able to pull together a nice draft for us that doesn't leave us to reinvent the wheel. Um, it actually seems pretty manageable. Um, so okay. I can share that with, you know, with, with everyone. I may start a drop a, a share file folder um, earlier, way in advance of the meeting, just so everyone has a, a chance to look at everything. So I guess keep an eye out for that. I'll let you know when I when I create that in the share file, just so we can start looking at the materials. Okay. Um, and let me see. Oh, we were recently notified that we received a grant. Um, Meg Robertson from the Commission on Disabilities had, has been suggesting for the last few years that we apply for a grant um, for the state do an ADA uh, evaluation and transition plan, which the, the town has, you know, not done and, and, and kind, of, kind of been overdue for a while. So this is something that I had spoken with um, the town administrator before, and we agreed that this would be a good time, and the, and the building commissioner too, we agreed this would be a good time to um, hire some help. Um, so we received a $35,000 grant um, to do that work. Uh, so we'll be looking for someone under contract soon. That's good. That's yeah, good. I don't know who's managing that project, but because I wrote the grant, it's probably going to be me. That's that's okay. Um, <laughs> okay so it's yeah, important. Don't, in the loop. <laughs> don't put too many hats on, Danielle. I need to stop finding grants because every time I find <laughs> one, I end up with a project. You gotta manage it. <laughs> yeah, you got to manage yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Carpenter Drive. Um, as we discussed at the last meeting, we have sort of a small group. Uh, that is going to be uh, discussing some of the preliminary stuff with Carpenter Drive. Um, Warren, um, you know, and agreed kindly to help us with this. And I actually, I don't know if you had a chance to look at your email, Warren, but I did. Yes, I did. I, I printed email. out all those plans. Oh, great. Uh, okay. Different concepts and I've looked them over. I don't have an opinion yet on them. Okay. Uh, I have questions about the way some of them are done because, you know, some of it looks like pie in the sky and some of it looks a little more practical. So. Um, but I'll, I'll discuss with that more after I spend some time with them. Sure, sure. Um, the, the goal would be after we discuss it as, you know, the small group, we were going to be uh, scheduling a neighborhood meeting because neighbors have really started to make inquiries. Um, obviously, they saw, you know, soil testing going on and they have questions. And I've had a lot of individual conversations, but we thought it would be a good time now to just just invite abutters to, um, you know, have a, a virtual meeting and hear some more information uh, sure. about where we are. Sure. So. Um, let me see. And we should talk about it ourselves too, about, you know, yeah. because I think that one of the things as a planning board, um, one of the things that the people are going to expect from us is that we've looked at this and put whatever expertise we have into making recommendations. Okay. So, because um, I mean, we, we, we do have a lot of talent on this board and I think we're able to uh, to give them some recommend some practical recommendations on what we think would work. Okay. So, and probably, um, I would probably think that we would want to coordinate with the board of selectmen too on on um, um, on our recommendations as well before we put them out into the public. If you know what I mean. Just as far as you mean the timing of the neighborhood meeting? Yeah, what or, what we, or which one of these four items and plans appears to be the most practical for what it is that, that needs to be done? Mm -hmm. we yeah, think, they, think, have they been? Yes, yes, Mr. Studo, have you seen these plans yet? Yeah, I did. I took a look at some and um, I think uh, I agree with you, Mr. Pierce. And I think what we can do is after we have that small discussion that yep. Danielle's going to put together, maybe um it's something where um i can have at least a short well, once we decide you know primarily you or decide what the best course of action is maybe then i can take it and under my uh committee reports have at least a brief discussion with the full select board you know just to get that preliminary just so it's kind of like it's not um right. you know it's not news to to everyone once it does <laughs> Yeah, so oh, we, we, may, we may categorize. We may say this is we like this one the best, but this one second, third, fourth, mm -hmm. and then and then and uh, some of our reasoning, and then um, and then it's always better to you know multiple eyes and ears looking at something. Many times comes up with the best plan, 
So we'll do that, and then and then the select will could look at it and say, ah, but what about this? And we'll say, okay, yeah. well, we can change these to here. You know, take take this one and make this one first now because of a good recommendation. So right, and the select board has to buy in; they control the property. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, I I think it was uh, what I wanted to do is to make sure that we're. One of the things that makes this all work really well is when both boards are on the same page. Yep, and so I absolutely. think it's really important for us to, to we'll, we'll do our stuff and then we'll sit with them and then we'll get everybody on the same page before we go to the general public. <laughs> and then they, here's what we're thinking. Yep. So, no, that's uh, a, that's, a, that's the way to do it because then they can, we can answer the same questions to different people. Exactly. And then exactly. you can get, um, you know, you get the most, when you can, I, I feel like, you know, I've seen already in town when you can put on a unified front, yes. there's much more yeah. chance that the recommendation goes through versus exactly the town meeting becoming, I don't want to call warring of sides, but it's more yeah, yeah. of, you know, I feel like when the, when the collective have way too much sometimes to think about and now all of a sudden, well, who's right, who's wrong? It's like, right. well, maybe it's better just to do nothing right now, which is always yeah, the yeah. worst yeah. result. Yeah, I've completely. already... I've been in town like almost four years and I've already seen that a couple of times. So I can, <laughs> so yeah, I agree. Well, now you know why I want to do it this way. I want all of yeah. us on the same page and I want us to go with the United front because we've right. all looked it over and, and, and we all agree that this is the best way to move forward. Yeah. So. United front okay, wins good. the way. Yep. Yep. That's correct. I Thank can you, drop Mrs. the plans Stewart. into the share file so all the CPC members can see them too. Um, they're just in draft form and um, yep. I definitely, Yes, I, I love the idea of getting some feedback from from both boards. I also I want to make sure we don't wait too, too long before we start talking with the neighborhood, because I do know that they're very interested in hearing where we stand with things and what we're thinking of doing. Yeah. And, um, you know, don't want to make sure. Well, if it looks good. like um, that there's some strong opinions and we need to do a workshop earlier, you know, I suppose we could um, on it or something. Well, I think. Having the neighborhood meeting to let people know. Uh, okay. Be, or, or no, I mean, certainly at our next meeting, too, we could have a discussion about it. Um, well, did, when you say you have a small group meet, you want to have a small group meeting? Is that... That's so, so, yeah, so having the representation from each of the boards, from, you know, you representing the CPC, um, you know, uh, yep. the select board, um, also Mary Prenny and... Um, and um, Dan Mills, Dan, <laughs> who's right here on the call. Thank you, Dan, um, mm -hmm. from FinCom. Um, having having that group sort of um, help to, you know, in just in terms of having some representation from the other boards and committees in right, town. Right. Um, but you know, it's it because it's just it's come to my attention that the neighbors really want to know what's going on, and they I, I know yeah. that they won't. Um, want us to hold, hang on to information too long without without asking so is your, your intention for this small group meeting would be to show them these four conceptual plans yeah so i emailed those to the to to each you know the four the four people and myself okay. you know me and the four people participating i thought we should have you know we could have a you know a, a brief zoom call um very soon and then maybe talk that through and then okay. if, if the next step is sharing with each of you know the select board and you know cpc Sure, that that would be would be fine. I just as part of what was on my radar was the neighborhood really does have questions. So we wanted to be forthcoming about, you know, this is the project. This is what we're thinking of. Here are some concepts, um, get some initial just questions and feedback and hear what their concerns are without saying here's going to be, you know, a, a final plan. And this is the one that right, everyone's right. leaning well, toward. I, I, I never thought that it would be. Yeah, OK, that's fine. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. the, my intention was just to make a recommendation on, and with, with some reasons behind it and then uh, and then take input because many times people come up with things that we didn't think about and it changes how we approach something. So yeah. let's give everybody a chance to have a say. Yeah, absolutely. But, let's give them some, but they're gonna expect us to give them at our very best professional recommendations. Definitely. Now, what I was wondering is, um, you know, if this is something that all the CPC members want to attend, I mean, should we schedule it for a Tuesday night? I would be hesitant to schedule it at our January 19th meeting because we have such a full agenda, but it could yeah. be the following Tuesday night um, if that's the time that works. Well, and if you have a, a, a small group, well, okay, this is after the small group meeting or you want this to be the small group? No, no, meeting? the small group meeting should be just kind of the Zoom call with the five of just us. Just us, right. Yeah, just so everyone can see what we're, what we're thinking, right. then okay. if you want to have another kind of a workshop discussion and then we on our way to having a neighborhood meeting, just because we yeah. do need to have a meeting. Yeah, because I would like everybody on the board to have some input 
and then of course the board select the select board as well. So, okay. all right. Okay. I mean, would you like to have? Would you like us to be on as an item on our next agenda, just for for discussion? Um, on the nineteenth. I don't know. I mean, if you want to have that discussion before a neighborhood meeting, I thought my next step, of, you know, because I do have some neighbors who have said, if it's on any agendas, please let us know. We really want to, we want to be there for uh, all I don't the know meetings. That we need to. Let's do the small group meeting first. Okay. But just basically the way you have it planned. Okay. And then, and then we'll, and then we'll uh, take what we get from that to the, uh, because I would like having a little input from that side first, it doesn't hurt at all either. You know what their what their anticipate what their expectations are, and that'll help us with our decisions as well. So let's do Me, that. Meaning to ask the select board, or meaning no, the no, to a, we'll have a small group meeting, and then we'll take whatever we hear from that back yeah. to our board, and um, and and maybe have a meeting with the select board at the same time. I, I don't know. Okay, but that if that happens, I will have to notify the neighborhood that it's yeah. happening because they've they've made it really clear that any. Right discussions they really want to be part of. So that's kind of why I was hoping to do that neighborhood meeting sooner just to say this is where we Okay, well let's yeah, let's do that soon and then okay. well let, let's let's do that meeting and then we'll decide where we go from there. Yeah. Let's see what we yeah. get out of that. Okay. 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 All right. Okay. Great. I guess that's it. Okay. <laughs> that's all? You sure? That's it. <laughs> All right, again, thank you everybody for coming tonight. Thank you, Rich. Thank you, Vincenzo. It's always great to see you guys. Dave. Have a nice day. Okay, Bye. Ryan, thank you. Bye. Dan, thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.